In 2016, at a recycling facility in Japan, scientists stumbled upon something unexpected. A group of bacteria was thriving directly on a discarded plastic bottle. That bottle was made of pet polyethylene terephthalate, a plastic not meant to degrade naturally. And yet, it was disappearing. The bacteria were consuming it. Plastic is everywhere, and the same qualities that make it so useful durability, stability, and resistance to the elements also make it nearly impossible to eliminate. PET is a type of polymer, which means it's built from repeating units of smaller molecules called monomers. In the case of PET, those monomers are ethylene glycol and terephthalic acid bonded into tough, tightly packed chains. These molecular chains are incredibly stable. They don't easily break down in sunlight, water, heat, or through microbial activity. That's why PET is ideal for water bottles, food containers, and textiles. It resists decay. It's lightweight, cheap, and strong. But once discarded, that durability becomes a serious problem. PET can linger in landfills for centuries. In oceans, it shatters into microplastics that infiltrate ecosystems and end up in the food we eat. We created a virtually indestructible material and then failed to control its afterlife. That changed in 2016, when a team at the Kyoto Institute of Technology identified a unique bacterium called Idionella succainsis. This microbe produces to crucial enzymes, potase and mhidis. Working together, these enzymes chop PET back down into its original building blocks ethylene glycol and terephthalic acid. The bacteria don't just cling to the plastic, they actually consume it at the molecular level. Initially, this natural degradation was slow. The enzymes worked best at mild temperatures, and it could take weeks or even months for noticeable breakdown of paste to sluggish for large-scale recycling. But scientists saw a breakthrough opportunity. In 2018, researchers in the UK enhanced potase through protein engineering, improving its speed and heat tolerance. Then in 2020, another team fused potase and mhidis into a single hybrid enzyme. This innovation made the breakdown process even faster. Some of today's engineered enzymes can dissolve thin PET films in just a few days. Why is this so significant? Most current recycling relies on mechanical methods melting and reshaping plastic. But this approach weakens the material over time. Enzyme-based recycling, known as enzymatic depolymerization, does something different. It breaks plastic back down into its purest molecular form, allowing it to be rebuilt into new plastic with zero loss in quality. This method is cleaner, more energy efficient, and capable of handling plastics that mechanical recycling can't process. A few biotechnology companies are already developing industrial systems to use these enzymes on a larger scale. The technology is still in its early stages, and current output is tiny compared to the more than 300 million metric tons of plastic produced globally each year. But the potential is massive. Instead of burying or incinerating plastic waste, we now have a chance to disassemble it molecule by molecule and start again. Not all plastics respond to this treatment yet, but PET is leading the way. We engineered a material that nature couldn't break. Now, nature or rather an unexpected microscopical lie is beginning to adapt. What once looked like irreversible damage may now be something we can learn to undo not by reversing our mistakes, but by learning how to carefully take them apart.